What is up guys, Rick Kakis here, and today we are taking a look at the new Wrath of the Machine primary, the Steel Medulla Pulse Rifle. Now this weapon was just added into Destiny with the release of the Wrath of the Machine Heroic Mode, and to acquire this weapon, you will need to beat the final Axis encounter in the Wrath of the Machine Heroic Mode, and you can get this weapon either out of the normal loot that drops, or, like how I got it, out of the secondary cash chest that specifically awards you with heroic loot. Now the Destiny community has known about this weapon for a decent amount of time now, and that's because it was added into the database and we were able to take a look at its stats and perks. And in doing so, this weapon looked quite promising, but does it live up to expectations? Well, I took my Steel Medulla and really put it through a trial by fire because I gave it to an alternate character and did the entire Wrath of the Machine heroic mode raid with this weapon. So I really got to see how this weapon actually performs at the absolute highest PvE difficulty in terms of activities. And these are my reports. So firstly, we are going to start out here by examining this weapon's statistics and perks. And I've got to say, first thing right off the bat is the stats of this pulse rifle are actually really, really good. Great range, fantastic starting stability, great reload, and good magazine size at 36. Literally no complaints when it comes to the starting stats. Now this weapon is a Hawka pulse rifle, so that means although there's actually no perk showing this, but it will fire in those bursts of four. This makes it so that it probably won't be super utilized in the Crucible. The Hawka pulse rifles really aren't used too much there, but in PvE, there's nothing wrong with being a Hawka Pulse Rifle, at least in my opinion. The perks of this weapon are where things get really interesting. Firstly, of course, you get the Whirlwind's Curse intrinsic perk that all raid weapons have. This weapon will do bonus damage to the Fallen, of course, very useful in the raid. And you will get bonus agility when this weapon is equipped. Very useful everywhere. You're next going to have three different ballistics to choose between. After that you have full auto which I think is a fantastic perk with pulse rifles. Moving on you have high caliber rounds, speed reload, and hand laid stock. Now I use the combination of smooth ballistics and hand laid stock to kind of get the maximum stability while still maintaining a decent amount of range. The final very interesting and entirely unique perk on this weapon, no other weapon in Destiny has this same perk, is Sign of Four. Landing three bursts on a target causes the fourth burst to do extra damage. Now that is very promising. So, so far, you have a full auto pulse rifle with fantastic stats and it has the chance to do just more damage than a normal pulse rifle. I mean, how could you go wrong? This thing sounds amazing. But again, is it actually amazing? So, in the raid, how did it perform? Now, I'm sure one of the main things you guys are wondering about this weapon is how good exactly is the Sign of Four perk? Because how much extra damage is added is really going to make this weapon either okay or insanely powerful. Well, here's exactly how that perk works. Again, you have to land three normal bursts, so burst, 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 then the fourth burst will be doing extra damage. All four rounds will be doing bonus damage. After that though, you're going to go back to doing normal damage bursts until your fourth burst again. So in each magazine, you will get two extra damage bursts. So again, how much exactly extra damage? Well, it turns out to be one third extra damage. Normally, I was doing 1188 damage to the voltage eater, but with the extra damaging burst, I was doing 1583. If you take 1188, times it by 1.33, basically a third, you get 1580. So just ignore a little bit of rounding there and decimals, and again that showcases that you get one third bonus damage with this sign of four perk. So essentially, because you get two extra damaging bursts in a magazine, you're basically getting two thirds of an extra burst in terms of damage. 
Now the main place this extra damage is going to come up is against bosses, because fighting them you're going to be able to get those extra damaging fourth bursts in, whereas if you're fighting a normal drag or a vandal, they're likely going to die after the first or second burst and therefore you're not going to get any sort of benefit in terms of extra damage. So how good was this gun against bosses? Well, actually not bad. I used it in every encounter through the Wrath of the Machine against all of the bosses and the first thing I noticed is how easy this weapon is to use against those bosses. It is incredibly accurate, especially with my choice of ballistics and hand laid stock. So you really just put this weapon over the boss's head, hold the trigger, and that's it. You barely have to do any sort of adjusting in your aim. The accuracy of this weapon is fantastic for landing those consistent headshots. However, in terms of the actual damage output, it's just okay. Now, having extra damage is no joke. Having two thirds of an entire extra burst is nothing to be looked down upon because this is going to basically out damage most other pulse rifles in the game because other pulse rifles are pretty much balanced to do relatively the same damage over time. This is literally just doing more. The one pulse rifle it doesn't even stand close to is of course the Outbreak Prime. The Outbreak Prime is going to produce Seaver Swarms actually every four shots as well or every four bursts I should say and those SIVA swarms are going to be doing just more damage. So that is just going to be a little bit of a better weapon than this. However, the Steel Medulla is legendary and the Outbreak Prime is exotic. And that should not be underestimated because using the Steel Medulla will still allow you to use a Sleeper Simulant or a Galahorn, both fantastic during this raid, whereas using the Outbreak Prime won't. You're gonna have to have a pretty good legendary machine gun or rocket launcher to justify not using the sleeper or galley. Like, that is the honest truth. However, the Outbreak Prime is not the only gun better than this one at damaging bosses. In fact, I would say that the Chaos Dogma, the Wrath of the Machine Raid Scout Rifle, is just better than the Steel Medulla against damaging bosses. The Triple Tap plus the Triple Double Wombo Combo perks on that weapon are just so good for sustained fire against enemy bosses. You're going to be able to expend 20 plus rounds easily from this scout rifle against bosses it's just fantastic so if you're looking for a primary to dps the crap out of bosses the chaos dogma is still probably going to be your best bet however bosses aren't the only thing in the wrath of the machine raid the thing that most impressed me about the steel medulla pulse rifle was just how effective it was against ads against dregs and vandals and shanks it absolutely melted all of them and in every encounter you know in the siege engine encounter in vosik there is a ton of ads just thrown at your team wave after wave after wave and so having a primary that is extremely effective and easy to use against these ads is a huge benefit and using a full auto pulse rifle like it was just so easy to use i was using the chaos dogma before and that thing is not the best against ads slowly chugging out ammunition it does a lot of damage per shot but it just takes so long to take down multiple ads and if you don't get a headshot you're just chugging these super slow rounds a full auto pulse rifle it is just so easy to use, point and click, extremely accurate. I was just melting ads so quickly, it was absolutely fantastic and I enjoyed my time at a much easier time with the Steel Medulla throughout the entirety of the raid, I would say as a whole, than I did with the Chaos Dogma. Chaos Dogma, better against bosses, don't get me wrong, but as a whole, as the overall better gun, I would have to say that the Steel Medulla is no joke probably my go-to primary for running the hard mode raid at this point forward. It's quite good against bosses and it's absolutely phenomenal against ads. 
Now guys, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed and found this informative. Now if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you want to see more Destiny content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. Now if you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at RickCacus. That's linked in the description down below, as is my Twitch channel which you can also follow. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.